Hi, my name is Nathaniel Reed, owner and doctor of physical therapy at Reed Physical Therapy. I'm a certified cranial manipular head, neck, and face pain specialist, and I'm the only one in Tarrant County at this time. So today I want to talk to you guys about headaches and some of the potential uh, treatments for headaches. So today we're going to talk about tension headaches, migraine headaches, sinus headaches, cervical genic headaches, and uh, TMJ headaches. Quickly I want to look at some of the frequencies of some of these. So 70 to 75 percent of headaches are tension headaches, and then we have 10 to 16 percent are migraine headaches, 10 to 15 sinus headaches, and then 1 to 5 percent are other headaches, and then we have less than 1 percent are caused by serious things such as tumor. So the first one I want to talk about is a tension headache, and you'll notice that all these muscles that surround the head here can act like a vice grip and can actually uh, press down on the the head and the skull and cause some of these headaches. A very common one is this temporalis muscle that sits on each side of the head. And some of the reasons we can get some of these muscles irritated, uh, trauma, repetitive strain, uh, sometimes our head is not being supported by our pillow, and sometimes it's even our computer uh, that can cause those issues. Now we've even found that um, cellular phones are causing some of our, um, our issues. So on this graph here you'll notice that our head weighs about 10 to 15 pounds and that's the, the amount of force going through the neck when our neck is straight but as we lean forward to look forward to read books look at the computer look at our cell phone the the force through the neck increases and can then disrupt and irritate those muscles and then cause uh, some of our headaches so then I want to talk about migraine headaches now migraine headaches there's lots of causes and reasons why we get migraine headaches the most common cause is because of irritated arteries now all these arteries as we're looking at them we'll notice that a lot of these arteries not only surround the skull but they actually go up into the brain and depending on uh, uh, which artery is irritated will determine our symptoms so what happens is there's nerves that are surrounded are there surrounding these arteries and when these arteries become irritated then they create swelling in a particular area of the uh, the brain or skull now a a very good example of how a tension headache can cause a migraine uh, is we have something called dura dura is a covering that surrounds the spinal cord and brain so here's a picture and there is a muscle that is located on the back of the neck that can actually that attaches directly to the dura and if the covering around the the spinal cord and brain is irritated then we're going to cause uh, a migraine headache to take place now the next thing I want to look at is something called cervicogenic headaches cervicogenic headaches come from the neck so they start in the back of the neck usually and they usually start at the first or second spinal cord area. So when we look at this nerve here, it's called the greater occipital nerve, and it can get irritated for a number of reasons. Uh, one of these vertebrae can be rotated and, and pushing into it, or we can have some of these muscles that sit back here. We can have some of these muscles irritating that nerve, and then what happens is we can have uh, something called greater uh, occipital neuralgia and that can cause nausea, visual issues, sound issues uh, and then a lot of times the pain will start back here in the neck and go all the way to the front near the eyeball. The next type of headache is that I want to talk about is sinus headaches. Now sinus headaches, um, there's lots of reasons you can get sinus headaches but one of the major causes is there is decreased space within the nasal cavity. So if you're looking at the skull here, you'll notice that we have all these um, all these bones connected together with these little lines here, and this this takes place throughout the entire skull, and especially in the uh, nasal cavity area, that area can get compressed over time due to gravity, uh, birth defect, falling. Um, so over time we lose the amount of space that's located down in, into those nasal passages. A very common area 
or bone that gets down and gets compressed is called the sphenoid bone. So if you're looking at the sphenoid bone by itself, uh, this back area would be where the brain would be sitting. And if we're looking at the front here, this would be where we would have our, our nasal cavities here, and this would be kind of where the nose is located. And what happens is uh, this area gets compressed and creates less space where uh, the sinuses um, are, and what happens is the fluid gets trapped in there and usually causes um, undue pressure or can cause infection that can cause headaches in our body. All right. Now the next one I want to talk about is uh, TMJ headaches. So TMJ headaches uh, are related to the jaw. So that's what TMJ stands for, temporomandibular joint. And you have a nerve um, that is located down by the, the TMJ joint, which the TMJ joint would be right here. They, they have it cut away so you can see this nerve. And even some of these nerves go up here by the, the, top, of the, the top of the forehead. And so whenever there's dysfunction in the, the um, TMJ joint, it can cause pain that travels into different parts of this nerve and, and including headaches that can go into the, the brain itself or into the, the forehead area itself. So if you're looking at that particular joint, you'll notice some of the muscles that are surrounding, such as the the masseter here. This, this masseter muscle is one of the main muscles that clenches your jaw when you're chewing. So if, if the nerve that's irritated that I showed you earlier, um, this muscle will start to clench down and actually start to compress harder and irritate the jaw, or irritate the, uh, the jaw joint itself and can cause the, uh, the pain to get worse. So when we're coming up with treatment, we, 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 we use a uh, evaluation to come up with the exact protocol and what we're going to use for you. Um, but there's a number of different treatments that we use. Um, one very powerful treatment, and this one's one that worked very well on me. Um, I've, I've had a history of, of headaches. I used to get them three or four days a week where I'd have to be indoors all day long. Uh, now I almost never get a headache. And dry needling was very powerful. And what it does is it relaxes some of the muscles and brings opioids to those muscles to, to keep them relaxed and decrease your symptoms. Then we have nasal skeletal release, and that is actually helpful for uh, the sinus headaches that I was telling you about. We're the only clinic and uh, the DFW that does this, and what it does is it put, we put a little gentle balloon into that area and it expands and opens up the space where the sinus area is and, and helps drain all of the fluid so that the pressure is not there. It's a very powerful treatment works really well and uh, then we use we have uh, manual techniques to rotate things back in place so that nerves aren't compressed muscles aren't irritated uh, we have something called spinal decompression which uh, what that does is it gently stretches the the neck and, and alleviates all the nerve compression and then at the beginning when we're getting everything back in place we can use something called kinesio tape to, to basically kind of keep your posture where we want it and so that you, things don't fall out of place again. And then for the swelling that we were telling you about with the migraine, uh, the swelling that's around those arteries, we have uh, e-stem and ultrasound that work really well for that. Uh, and then one of the main things is teaching you how to uh, have postural correction so that you don't just leave and, and, and go right back into your the same posture that created some of your headache. And then we uh, we use uh, diet and nutrition education to kind of help people out and, and understand some of the things that can also cause headaches. Um, one of my, one of uh, my particular triggers was I was uh, vitamin D deficient, and so um, that helped a whole lot. And, and we're trained in all that, so we definitely um, will know what to do for you. And then we have work and home ergonomics. I think this is one of the most powerful. Uh, we're going to teach you how to keep your progress, how to keep your headaches from coming back. And then uh, stress and breathing techniques to help you be able to catch it before it turns into a headache. So we'll teach you uh, how to keep it calm and not uh, ha have those headaches come back. And then once everything's in place, 
we'll use gentle uh, strengthening and stretching exercises uh, to maintain it and keep the posture where we want it. And, and so we have definitely, um, we use a comprehensive uh, collection of different things to come up with a game plan for you. So check us out at readpt.com or uh, email us if you have any questions. And you guys have a great day.